So, um, you know, it's weird. The preseason's weird, Jimmy. Uh, Belichick was one of the few coaches who played a bunch of starters in the preseason. And so a lot of times, Mac Jones, by his second series, is going up against second, third, and fourth string guys, and Belichick's playing starters. So my takeaway is the kid looks good to me, but I can't tell. These, some of those guys he faced were backups on backups. Um, what do you make of Mac Jones, what you saw, what you know you'll get, what you're unsure of so far? Yeah, I, I like him. I, I, I think, you know, the key with Jones is, you know, he doesn't make a lot of mistakes. Even though he's a rookie, he, he went through preseason without a lot of mistakes. And, you know, Belichick played his you know, starters but for the simple reason he's got a lot of new players. Yeah. And so he needed to put his team together. Plus, he's old school. A lot of the old school coaches, you know, they played their starters right. in preseason. Some of the new coaches, you know, they said, hey, we'll find out about them in that first ball game." I don't agree with that, but that's how they're approaching it. So you've um, Bruce Arians and Tom, all right, they're Super Bowl champs. They come back. Go to your Dallas teams. When you knew you just won the Super Bowl, you're probably bringing, bringing back the best roster. You're bringing back Troy. You may have the best quarterback. What, what do you work on from that point? Is it just sandpapering, refining? I mean, did you, the year after your Super Bowls, did you feel like, oh, we got a hole here? We got, or is it just kind of refining it? Yeah, and you, you always got a, a few new players, and so, you know, you got to work those new players in. But, you know, we, we played our starters uh, in every ball game. Uh, even into the last ball game, you know, we would give them a series or so. And, in fact, I wouldn't even let our guys take off their shoulder pads the second half. <laughs> Uh, one time, you know, you know, we had Emmett Smith, he took off his pads and a running back went down. So Emmett runs into the ball game without his shoulder, you know, <laughs> and he kind of straps on his arms and everything else. He skinned up his arm and, and really it bothered him for two weeks after that. So, you know, our guys were fully dressed the entire ball game, the entire preseason. Uh, and that's the way I looked at it. What do you worry about with Tampa this year? Anything you worry about? Oh, you know, you always worry about complacency. Uh, you know, I, Colin, I, I think, you know, obviously coaching is important, you know, throughout the year. But I, I think coaching might be as important in this first ball game. Now, you gotta, you got to ask yourself, how physical the practices have the, has the team gone through? Are those receivers and backs, are they going to be able to take a hit and still hold on to the football? You know, if they haven't taken a hit all preseason, you know, what's going to happen when they get hit in that first ball game? The other thing is, how well has the coach prepared the team for the unexpected? You know, different kind of formations, different kind of, you know, motion and looks, different kind of blitzes. And so the coaching in this first ball game, uh, I, I think it's paramount. You know, I, I, I don't know that teams really play to form in the first ball game. They get closer to form as they go through the season. Yeah. So Joy and I talked about this yesterday. Virtually every single team in the NFL without a rookie quarterback named their quarterback captain. So any quarterback that started last year, any games that's coming back as a starter is captain, except Tua in Miami. And, you know, three weeks ago we hear they're looking at Deshaun Watson. And I, it's not a big deal maybe, but it feels like something, Jimmy, doesn't it? Well, there's two things here because I heard you talking about it yesterday. Yeah, you know, I know a lot of the players think maybe the coaches kind of rig the voting a right. little bit to make sure certain guys are captain. I don't think that you know that shouldn't ever happen. I don't think it happened because if the players found out for sure that happened, it'd be a mutiny on your hands. <laughs> yeah, and so it's a it's it's really the players voting, but you know maybe two is not one of the fellas. You know, and, you know, maybe he doesn't go out and have beers with the fellas. Uh, I don't necessarily think him not being a captain means he's not a good player. Uh, it just means that he's not one of the fellas and that he didn't get the votes. Now, there was a few of those quarterbacks that were named captain. If I'd have had a vote, I would not have voted him captain. <laughs> you know, but, hey, you know, I'd say, what in the world are they voting him captain before? I, I, I'm going to bench him after the first week, you know, so who knows? <laughs> was my, I guess that a Aikman was your captain. He was one of the captains? Uh, I, I went uh, different captains every single week. And then at the end of the season, after we got through playing, uh, I had him vote for captains for the year. Uh, I didn't want somebody to be captain, then he goes down with an injury after the first week, uh, or somebody to be a captain and he ends up being a third teamer. 
you know, or I end up cutting him. You know, so I didn't make captains every week. And you know, I didn't have the same ones every week. So I was talking about this earlier. In, in with Baker Mayfield, it doesn't have a contract yet, and and generally speaking, uh, you know, there's the guys that like Mahomes or Josh Allen. I think Justin Herbert's this. You're gonna know pretty quick. Big, strong, productive, mature. Boom. Then there's the guys you need to watch them for a year or two. Uh, you know, Trubisky, uh, Paxton Lynch. You're like, hey, it's not working. We, we can't win big. And then you get into the difficult ones where I think there's a little bit of this with Dak, Garoppolo, Baker, where I know I can win with them, but if I pay them, you know, how much can they carry? Can I, I can't, right? And I, I kind of feel You can't like, get rid of them if you pay them. That's right. So that I kind of feel like Baker's going to get re-signed, but I, I do think he needs to be managed. Where do you land on Baker? I, my advice would be the same thing I said about Dak about three or four years ago. Yeah, you know, quarterbacks are hard to find. You know, even if you've got one that's just pretty good, he doesn't have to be great. If he's pretty good and you got a really good football team, you can win with him. Yeah. Then you pay him because if you wait a year or two, it's going to cost you a lot of money. Yeah, that's interesting. So, um, you know, it's such a different time. Uh, last time I had you on, we talked about this, that you did ask Troy Aikman's opinion on stuff. You wanted Troy's opinion. Yeah. And, I, and, I, and I, we've said this before. I, Russell Wilson, Aaron Rodgers, if, if you can ask him things. I mean, I get it. Uh, Aaron's a very public quarterback. He goes on radio shows. He's outspoken. Right. And, Jimmy, generally in your career, most great coaches would like to keep most of that crap in-house. You don't want that stuff going out to newspaper guys and radio guys. Would you be a little uncomfortable, Aaron, every week, kind of throwing us private stuff publicly? Would you ever at some <laughs> point go sit him down and go, Aaron, we don't need this stuff out there. We, I, just keep this stuff in-house. Yeah, I, I, I think you, know, you can have that conversation with him. I don't know that Aaron's going to listen to you. <laughs> you know, but, uh, yeah, 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 I think you need to have that conversation. And as far as... You know, his advice, I would talk to Aaron for sure, you know, if I, before I made moves. I mean, you know, like I talked to Troy before we hired Norv Turner. In fact, Troy met Norv before I finalized his contract. Uh, and so I, I think the key here as the head coach, now, if Troy would not have liked Norv, I might have sat in his office for an hour or two and, and talked and talked and talked until Troy finally said, yeah, I like Norv. You know, and then you, know, you, you work it to where he makes the decision that you want him to make. Okay. And, uh, and so, you know, but, but I would listen to Aaron as far as his input. He knows a lot more than what some rookie scout or maybe a coach that's been there a year or two knows. He knows more about that football team than they do. You know, Jimmy, um, when you have a 17th game now in the NFL season, and it's only one game, but that's a lot of wear and tear. And I, and I do look at some veteran teams, um, and I think to myself, like if you're the Rams' Andrew Whitworth, I'm thinking to myself, how many padded practices? How, do I want to give him a double bye week, a, a, a bye after the bye? I mean, where do you land on a 17th week? What do you do with it? <laughs> Colin, you're soft. Yeah, you're soft. <laughs> I remember when I went to Dallas, you know, no, no, nobody had the offseason. You know, Washington and Kansas City probably the only ones that had the offseason program. You know, we started working them, you know, lifting weights four days a week and having actual workouts three days a week, a year around. Frank Luxa, Luxa with the Fort Worth Star Telegram said, these guys are going to get worn out, you know, by the end of the season. There's no way in the world that these guys can hold up. Well, you know, I said, hey, they're young guys. You know, they're going to be fine. You know, and so, you know, now the league has changed. Now everybody works year round, but then with the collective bargaining agreement a couple of years ago, they only worked out in pads about once a week and, you know, they don't hit and uh, it, it would be difficult for me because we hit three days a week. And, and so, Hey, I don't worry about that 17th game. They're young guys. They can handle it. They're in great shape. Uh, they're not going to get worn down. Uh, by the way, uh... now I will say, I will say this, your older players like Whitworth, I would set him out for a lot of the work. I would protect the older players, but those young guys can handle it. So <clears throat> Kansas City's re redoing their offensive line. I think they have four or five new guys, and Andy Reid knows what he's doing. But th that is an interesting unit, Jimmy, because you could make an argument it, it has to be your most cohesive unit. How long, you know, Pittsburgh's doing the same thing. They're kind of transitioned with their offensive line. Green Bay a little bit, too. 
How long did it did you feel comfortable if you had new pieces protecting your quarterback and engineering your running game? How long does it take to mesh with a new O line? It probably depends on how smart the offensive linemen are and how good an offensive line coach you had. I I had Tony Wise as one of the great offensive line coaches ever, and he had that bunch working as a unit you know, pretty quick. and And we had some changes. We brought in Eric Williams. And we promoted him to first team, even though he was a third-round pick. We put him on first team after the second preseason game and moved Kevin Gogan, who was our starting right tackle. We moved him to offensive guard after that second preseason game. So if you've got an outstanding offensive line coach and you've got pretty smart individuals playing offensive line, it's not going to take long for them to work as a unit. All right, finally, Dak Prescott. What do you expect this year? He's 340 days, hasn't taken a hit, a couple of surgeries. Where do you land this year? What do you think we get? I think if, if medically he's okay, um, and that's a big if, uh, if he's okay medically, I think he'll play well. He's got a great supporting cast. Um, now, yeah, I think the key to their football team, though, is, is Elliott. If Ezekiel Elliott has a great year, he'll protect that defense. And then on top of protecting the defense, he'll allow Dak to get the big plays to those receivers rather than the Dinkin and the Duncan. And so Ezekiel Elliott is a key as far as them having success as a team. Yeah. All right, Jimmy, appreciate you stopping by. Football season starts tonight on Fox. It's great seeing you. All right, Colin. And Joy, I, I look forward to having you as a neighbor. Hi, everybody. Thanks for watching. Subscribe here to get the latest from the show. Also, be sure to check out more of the best clips from The Herd or go watch a few segments from other shows on FS1.